my name's Scott, and this is an update video for my Raspberry Pi in terms of like hardware and applications. So I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff that I've been doing. So this is a tank, an RC tank, and what I want to do is control it through like a Wi-Fi connection through my computer. So um, in order to do this, though, you need some components in order to like put it in and wire it right. So what I did was I gutted the whole tank out and then put in my the Raspberry Pi along with a couple other things. So uh, now I'm going to show you all the components that I used and then um, how I wired them up. So you, you guys know in order to control any uh, RC car you need something to control it and that's the Raspberry Pi so you already know about the Raspberry Pi but what I, the software I'm using to control it is the wiring Pi program or software and I think that uses pins 2 and 4 on here so that'll give me uh, my left wheel to go forward and back and then my right wheel to go forward and back so anyway that's the that's the Raspberry Pi I'm using to control it. Uh, the next piece is the battery pack. So in the last video I made, uh, this is the battery pack that I used, and that gives it power. You can charge it through uh, any any form of charger as long as you give it the right voltage. Um, so if you plug it into an, another power adapter, it will also still keep giving it power. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it, but that's, this is the battery pack. Um, but this goes to my inverter, or my power control board. So from the previous video I also had this, and this works pretty well. Like it gives it 5 volts, and it also you can also give things 12 volt, which I'll get to in just a second. So this is the power, inver or the power control board. So the last piece, besides the Raspberry Pi, the battery pack, and the power control board, is this thing, which I put on my own, like, breadboard. So in the previous video, I had I thought the thing I ordered would work, but it didn't at all. So I took off the actual controller and put it on my own breadboard, got it wired all right, and then... I have this plugged into the motors themselves. So where the power control board comes from, or where the 12 volt goes, is into this and it also takes 5 volt. So you can really slam a lot of power through this thing. I think it's like 20 watts or something, which is a lot in terms of like motion, motion and motor controllers. So we've got all these other pieces of hardware, but the last thing that we actually need in order us, for us to get unwired is a wireless adapter. And so you can use really any wireless adapter, but I have this, which has a nice big antenna. So when I put all my stuff inside of the tank, then my antenna will stick right out the back, just like that. So then it'll have signal from any direction you give it. So now I'm going to show you how to wire all this together. Um, the, it all stems from the battery pack being plugged in to the power board. So this, this battery pack is actually a 12 volt battery pack which goes directly into this spot. So on the on the left hand side here is where the positive and negative go from the battery pack. So from there we need to plug in the Raspberry Pi and our driver for the motors. So the driver for the motors wants our 5 volt and it also wants a 12 volt which is right next to it so I'm gonna have a separate diagram for the driver chip which I'll talk about in a little bit 
um, that stems from that. But the other thing is you can run the Raspberry Pi off of the USB slots. So I'm actually going to have a hub plugged in to the 5 volt rail of my power control board and not even bother with trying to plug it into this slot. So then I can run multiple things all off of the 5 volt of the USB hub and not have to worry about power consumption issues. So, so the last thing is the driver chip. So you important nerds that are like, hey, what, is the, what the heck is he actually using for the chip? It's actually an L293D chip. So I tore this off of that, that other board that you saw and I just put it on my own breadboard. So in the link description I'll show you how to wire your own L293D chip which goes to both of these motors that I have on the tank. So I'm, I'm going to get you one last shot of the tank that I have which you'll have something different for sure. It just has two motors in the back. One for the left and then one for the right. So the next video uh, that I will have uh, is me actually having this all completed and in working order uh, because really all I have to do is plug in the components and then just use it. So uh, it'll be pretty quick and then I'll show you that it's working and then we'll have another video on all the software stuff that I used. So it'll be fun. <laughs> I don't, yeah. <laughs>